So, does the color of our clothing really have an effect on how we perceive others? Does the color of our clothing have an effect on how we see ourselves? Well, as it's American football season, let's go to the gridiron for some answers. Well, it turns out there's research on the subject that shows that when people wear dark colored uniforms, in particular black, they oftentimes act more aggressive. Perhaps even more interesting and unfortunate for the players wearing black is that they are perceived as more aggressive, especially by officials. Now, being more aggressive in a sport where that's maybe an advantage, is that a good thing? Does it outweigh the penalties? I don't know. Who knows? I wasn't able to find a study on that. But I do know this next use of color that's been going on since 1979 almost sounds too crazy to believe. So back in the 1970s, the University of Iowa brought up a coach from Texas named Hayden Fry. He had gone to Baylor and picked up a degree in psychology. Apparently, one of the things he remembered from his studies was the effect of the color pink on male psychology. So they did this whole study at the U.S. Naval Detention Center up in Seattle for over 200 days. A number of prisoners, when they would first enter the facility, they would go into the pink room. What they found is exposure to that pink room for 15 minutes would reduce aggression and actually relax the muscles. And the effect would last for a solid 30 minutes. So getting back to the University of Iowa, and their sneaky tactics. So yeah, in 1979, Hayden Fry had the visitor's locker room painted entirely pink. We're talking not just the lockers, but the urinals, the walls, the ceilings, every surface in that locker room had pink on it. The results? Well, Iowa outperformed expectations throughout the 1980s and had some pretty good years, I'd have to say. So if colors this powerful, how can you go about using it in your wardrobe? First up, the color navy blue. Now, the psychological effect on the wearer is this. A feeling of calm, a feeling of confidence, a feeling of being trustworthy. How do other people perceive you when you wear navy blue? Reliable, professional, and mature. Now, navy blue is one of the easiest colors to bring into your wardrobe. Yeah, you could go with shirts, but the easiest place is going to be your denim. Maybe bring it in with a suit or even a pair of chinos. On average, navy blue makes up about 18% of a man's wardrobe. For me, probably about double that. Personally, as a dad, I gravitate towards this color because it hides stains and it works with most items, most of the jackets in my wardrobe. Next up, we've got the color charcoal gray. So the emotional effect it has on the wearer is that of sophistication, poise, and elegance. The effect on the viewer, you come off as elegant. You come off as timelessly styled, as balanced. There's also a study out there that shows men that wear charcoal gray are perceived as more intelligent. Now, gray is technically a non-color, and that's why I love it. It's so easy to wear. I like to reserve it for trousers. You can also wear it with jackets. You could wear it in a shirt, but I'd be careful about that. And shoes, it's a little bit more daring. It's going to draw a little bit of attention. It's not very common, but it's relatively easy to match. And again, it can draw the eye. Now, according to the research I saw, charcoal gray makes up about 15% of a man's wardrobe. I thought this was high. I know for me, it's only about 5%. Next up, we've got the color white. And the feelings that it gives the wearer is that of optimism, of clarity, and of purity. The effect on the viewer, where those that wear white are perceived as straightforward, pristine, and genuine. Transparency, honesty, new beginnings, all of these are associated with the color white in the West. Now, you can probably guess the easiest place as a man to be able to wear white is going to be in our shirts, whether that's a t-shirt, whether that is a dress shirt, uh, just a simple button-up. You can also pull it off in the shoes. Again, it's going to draw attention to the footwear, really popular with younger men. The practicality of it, though, it can be a lot of work to clean. Uh, I think, simply put, I know for me in my wardrobe, I just gear towards white shirts, especially those with a collar. And as a percentage of the wardrobe, on average, about 12%. I know in my wardrobe, it's a little bit less. Now, gents, today's video is sponsored by my friends over at Anson Belt and Buckle. For over a decade, I've been wearing Anson's belts and buckles because they're timeless. On top of that, you guys know I love interchangeability. One of my favorite things about this is how all the buckles work with all the straps. Now, me personally, because I'm pretty rough on belts, I love their Invincibelt collection. That being said, if you want something a little bit fancier, check out their Premier collection. These are all handcrafted in the USA with crocodile or Italian calfskin. On top of that, let's talk about innovation their micro adjust system. So if you own a regular belt, you know that you can only adjust it every inch. What I love about Anson Belt and Buckle's micro adjust system is that you can adjust to the quarter inch. So the belt is going to be more comfortable and it doesn't get bent out of shape. And I have to say, gents, that's what makes Anson Belt and Buckle such great gifts is that you get to cut the strap to adjust. You get one strap, you cut it to fit, and boom, you've got
you've got the perfect fit. And speaking of cut and to adjust, don't be scared because this is one of the stories I love to share. I know one of you guys bought one of their belts and you cut it too short and you realize, okay, I, I've got to get a new strap. It was my fault. You reached out to Anson Belt and Buckle. The guy said that, hey, Dave took care of him just like family. That's why I love this company. Now, gents, when you go over to their website, you got tons of options, tons of straps, but to make this easy down in the description of today's video, we've got an awesome package where you can grab two straps and three buckles or two buckles and three straps. That's six belt combinations in their most popular box. And you can get this for under a hundred bucks. That being said, if you don't know where to start, if you're like, you know, I'm going to be on the fence, join their text club. They occasionally have a flash sale. They're one of my favorite companies. I have worked with these guys again for over a decade. I love what they're doing. I know the founders personally, an awesome father, son, family run business. Check them out. Awesome deal. Yeah, use that link. Go check out Anson Belt and Buckle. Next up, we've got the color black. First up, the effect on the wearer. Power, elegance, a bit of mystery. Now, in uniforms, as I said, it can actually make a man feel more aggressive, but when worn with a suit, it can actually give a feeling of confidence. Now, what about the people on the outside, to the viewer? When they see a man in black, what do they see? A man that's assertive, a man that's authoritative, a man that's enigmatic. A man in black commands attention and respect. Now, for the average guy, black makes up about 10% of the wardrobe. For some of you guys, a lot more. For me, it's actually going to be less. I don't have a black suit. Yes, I do actually have one for sample purposes, but I never wear a black suit because I think it's for black tie. You should reserve it for formal events. Black t-shirts and black jeans. I think I've got one pair and I rarely wear either of those. What about you guys? Any of you guys disagree on the black suit? You've got one, you wear it and you love it. Or any of you guys just really gravitate towards black jeans, black shirts. Again, let me know in the comments below. I love hearing from you. Next up, we've got olive green, about 8% of the average man's wardrobe. I know in my wardrobe, a bit more. Now, the psychological effect on the wearer is that of tranquility, a closeness with nature, a feeling of energy. Personally speaking, I absolutely love this color. It's one of my go-to in my wardrobe. And I have to say that it gives me a feeling of confidence. And so even though I'm giving you in general how some people feel, understand that if it works with your eyes, if it's something you've gotten compliments with a particular color, it could be a signal of strength and something that you can associate with any positive or in some cases, negative feelings. That being said, olive green, how do most people perceive it? Well, if you wear it, you're going to be perceived as reliable as earthy as a bit serene. So how to pull off olive green. It works really well with jackets, especially casual jackets. You can also bring it into chinos, occasionally on a shirt, maybe into a pair of shoes, especially maybe in suede. Next up, the color brown. Now the effect it has on the wearer, stability, dependability, and warmth. Average man's wardrobe, about 7%. My wardrobe, probably closer to 15%. I know for me, when I think about brown, it's about comfort and reliability. It's a very earthy color and it works for this season. It's going to be the majority of my shoes and a lot of my jackets. Now, the effect on the viewer, how do other people see you when you wear brown? Well, it's actually considered to be one of the most trustworthy colors. So if you want to be approachable, if you want people comfortable around you, maybe look to the color brown and see if it can fit in your wardrobe. And besides shoes and jackets, guys, look to sweaters. So tons of great options when it comes to a dark, earthy brown, especially in cashmere. And uh, yeah, just people want to get close. It's a very comforting type of you know jumper to throw on in the cooler weather. Next up, we've got the color light blue, making up about 7% of the average man's wardrobe. It's a little bit more in mine. And I love it because this is just a color of peace. Affability, relaxation, calm. If you want a color that just simply you're going to be able to calm down a rowdy crowd, give a presentation in a light blue jacket or a light blue shirt. Now, the effect on the viewer, you're going to come off as friendly. You're going to come off as easygoing, as trustworthy, as just simply someone that can be approached and you're going to calm people down. Again, it has that effect on pretty much everyone. Now, shirts are where this color is going to dominate. And for good reason, you can mix them, you can match them, you can you know, dress them up, you can dress them down. But you're going to, I've got a jacket in light blue that I think it looks really good. Uh, you can even pick up a pair of trousers in light blue. But I would, lighter colors I try to avoid just because I don't want to get my trousers stained. It always seems to happen. But yeah, pick up a light blue and a polo, you'll get a lot of miles out of it. Next up, we've got the color red. About 4% of a man's wardrobe. For me, this number was a bit high. I know it's smaller. I use it as an accent piece with accessories. I rarely wear it as an individual item. I think I have one red shirt that is like a light, I would almost call it more pink. And this is for good reason because the psychological effect on the wearer is that of gives them a feeling of audacity, gives them that passion, that energy. It actually just gets the blood moving. Now to the viewer, to the people seeing you in red, they are going to get a feeling of vigor. 
of confidence, of dynamism. The color red commands attention. It's a bold statement, and that's why it's so common in neckties, especially with politicians. Think about it. They mix it in with that blue suit, which gives them the feeling of being trustworthy, but that red necktie is all about the power. That combination, and there have been studies about this, people just simply trust this person more, even before they've spoken, if they don't even know who the guy is. And I do need to say that the color red can also be perceived as very attractive, especially with the ladies, less so with the guys, but there are studies when guys just have a little bit of red, they are perceived as being more attractive. There was even this study done of, they actually had the same recording that this guy did in a sweater. One sweater was red, the other one was blue, or and white, but the red sweater again and again, this person come on, came off as more authoritative. So of all the colors we've talked about so far on this list, red is probably the most powerful. That being said, don't think that you can overdo it. It's actually best kind of like a spice. You just want to add a bit to the food and it's going to bring out the flavor versus if you put too much in there, it just overpowers and all of a sudden you look like a clown. Maybe you look for a red polo, maybe a red pair of chinos you can have fun with if you're a younger guy or an older guy that just wants to bring in a classic look with, you know, a blue navy blazer. Point being is you can find little areas to bring in red besides the accent pieces. Now, I mentioned these are the emotions, these are the perceptions of people in the West. Understand if you're over in China, if you're over in India, if you're down in South America, there can be different perceptions to color. In fact, I would love to hear from you guys down in the comments. I know you guys from around the world, your experience with certain colors and their meaning. So next up, we've got the color purple. Now, purple can be that deep purple. You can maybe even bring in lavender. Lavender doesn't have the same effect though, but in general, purple for me is all about individuality. It's also about luxury. If you know anything about the history of the color, this was a very difficult color for most of human history for people to produce. Seriously, it took weeks to make the dye from tens of thousands of snails. That's why actually where they got it. And it was very difficult and had a lot of toxic. Yeah, it was just not, it was difficult to make this stuff. As such, even to this day, when people wear purple, it's seen as unconventional. That's why if you wear it, you're an individual, maybe with your necktie, everyone else is wearing the red, you've got that purple, you're standing out from the crowd. Now, as you can imagine, when people see somebody wearing purple, they interpret it as that person is innovative. Now, purple is a little bit harder to bring into the wardrobe. You can maybe find something in a deep, rich purple as a shirt. I've seen it done, you know, in a variety of different materials. It can look really good and unique when worn with the right jacket. Socks, accessories though, that is where the majority of the time we're going to see purple, pocket squares, neckties. I've also seen it as an accent color in jackets and shirts whenever there's multicolors involved. Next up, we got the color yellow, a small percentage of a man's wardrobe, about 3% on average. I know I have very few pieces that use this color. Now, the emotion that it has on the wearer is that of being cheerful, of being vibrant. Now, when people see somebody wearing the color yellow, they come off as bright, optimistic, effervescent, and warm. Similar to the color purple, yellow is not normally going to be found in jackets, trousers. Sometimes you can find it in shirts, but it's going to best be worn with accessories. So, wearing a gold necktie, wearing a pocket square with a bit of gold or yellow in it to draw attention. It is like red. It's going to draw a lot of attention, but it's more of just like a happy type of attention. You can also wear it with socks. I've seen that done really well. Now, what about the color orange? Now, as a Texas long Longhorn, I am sorry to see it is such a small part of a person's wardrobe. I actually have a jacket in orange, but in general, the feelings you're going to get from that color are feelings of zest, adventure, and sociability. When people see somebody wearing orange, they're thinking they're going to be fun, that they're lively, they're going to be affable. In many ways, it's very similar to yellow. It's seen as a very playful color, and again, it's going to be mostly worn with accessories. That being said, I've seen it done well with jackets, again, mostly in Texas, and shorts, which I just wear around, and they work actually really well with a navy blue shirt. And of course, we can't forget pink, right? 2% of a man's wardrobe, the feelings are going to be that of kindness, playfulness, and an open mind. And men that know how to wear pink are rewarded because they are seen as being more confident, self-assured, contemporary, and understanding. Gents, if you rock pink, you show you're in touch with your feelings. Well, maybe. Now, what about gold? What about silver? What about jewelry? Actually, if you check out this video right here, I talk about necklaces. Should a man wear them? How should a man wear them? Go check it out. It is a solid one. If you enjoyed today's video, you will love this one. Boom, right here.